Hello, my name is Vitotas Butrimas. I'm going to talk about industrial cybersecurity for the Chief Information System or Information Security Officer. It's a part one of our three part MLM series. And we're going to begin by approaching the question what is industrial cybersecurity and what does it have to do with a CISO? In the beginning here, you see is a graphic has CISO in the center, and these are supposedly the things that a, a traditional CISO has to be in charge of. He's the chief of the information security, trying to protect the information. He's trying to make it secure, and he's the officer. You know, these are his, his uh, main duties. And I, I look at this, and I, I see there's something still missing. If we're talking about industrial cybersecurity, what do you think is missing in this graphic? Is there a word that could be placed also there as well? Well, the word safety. Safety is a priority, especially if you're talking about an industrial operation governed by the laws of physics and chemistry. To enter this environment, you're leaving the office with your cup of coffee and your donuts on the desk and your computer and your mobile phone, and you're going into an environment where you have special anti-static shoes, boots, helmet, because you're going where uh, physical forces are, are very uh, nearby. How many of you have seen the uh, film uh, uh, Apollo 13? Uh, there's a famous uh, line in there uh, from real life, uh, the Apollo 13 flight that had a, an accident. Uh, Houston, we have a problem. And there uh, the engineers are sitting and they're figuring out how to bring the crew and, uh, back safely to Earth. They figure they have plenty of time. The, the uh, spacecraft will just uh, swing around the moon and, and come back to the Earth automatically according to the, the, the flight plan and just some adjustments. But then one engineer uh, raises her hand and says, excuse me, and we better start thinking about ways to conserve power because there isn't enough for the life support and the navigational systems. So there was a knowledge understanding gap that had to be bridged at that point between the engineers what they thought the solution was compared to the reality of the situation. And those that are responsible for office or enterprise information systems, IT people, IT departments, CISOs, they approach cybersecurity in a different way than those responsible for monitoring and controlling a physical process. Both groups are concerned about you know, cybersecurity, but they do not necessarily have the same security objectives. Here's some dialogues that I've had with CISOs uh, when I uh, visited some industrial facilities. You know, I would say uh, after a nice tour of the uh, IT department server room and so forth, you know, thanks for showing me the server room. Would it be possible to meet with your senior plant engineers in the control room uh, by the pumping stations? Uh, the CISO says, yes, it can be arranged, but I never met them before. <laughs> so, you know, this is uh, this 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 told me you know, there is this gap here. You know, the CISO is responsible uh, for the uh, um, part of the security of his company and uh, the, the crown jewels of the operation. He doesn't even know the engineers uh, who are monitoring and controlling this physical process of uh, pumping aviation fuel. Another one, you know, I'm a new CISO and I'm having trouble talking with my engineers. Could you advise on how to speak their language? I actually had this, this conversation and I arranged uh, for him to come and visit and I explained a, l a little bit about what I talk about in these uh, three MLMs on what the CISO should know about industrial cybersecurity. His IT background was not enough for him to understand the physical process involved, process control, safety systems, uh, where you're not so much involved with the protecting the information and the data, you're really seeking to protect the process. And that's what he needed help in understanding before he can talk to his engineers. There is an IT and industrial cybersecurity understanding gap. Here's a very good example uh, of the time when uh, Stuxnet was first discovered in the fall of 2010. Stuxnet was malware that attacked a nuclear enrichment facility. One of the researchers from a very uh, highly respected antivirus company, uh, a company that's used to the office enterprise servers, uh, computers, and, and that kind of environment. He described what he was looking at when he was studying the Stuxnet code, 
And then he ran into a part that he did not quite understand. He knew about the windows part and the, the zero days there, but then uh, he said, I didn't even know what a PLC was. This is something that he found in the code, reference to something called a PLC. So he had to Google for what is a PLC. That baseline knowledge uh, we just did not have. And, and, and this, I, I think, is an important uh, lesson uh, that can be learned to understand that we are really working in different kinds of environment. If we are a CISO and we're going to the plant floor, uh, to the control room, where some kind of operation is underway with a physical process, uh, we really need to be aware uh, that we might not know as much as we think we do. Patching and updates. You know, it's a sound IT cybersecurity practice, right? Every CISO should know this, right? Uh, well, you know, I, I went uh, to an industrial site and asked them, you know, what about your patching policy? And your senior plant engineer, he responded, uh, uh, we consider patching to be an unacceptable industrial risk. We don't do that. And, you know, that is a, that is a shock to hear for the first time if you're, if you're coming from an office IT uh, background, cybersecurity uh, patching, you have to do it, but on the industrial side, patching you have to really plan for when there's downtime uh, because you just can't stop supplying electricity. You can't stop uh, pumping fuel uh, and, and water down, down a pipeline. Uh, you have to plan for it, downtime, maintenance time, test the patch. Does it work, everything uh, that, that's there? Uh, that's why it's an unacceptable industrial risk to just do it. In the office, we don't even think about it. We just patch it. But here you do have to think twice. What then is industrial cybersecurity? Well, it's enterprise-wide security policy on the office side and also on the industrial side. Enterprise-wide security policy and capability We'll be talking about what that capability is uh, later, but it has to do with trained people who know what they're looking at and what to do with it. Uh, employed to ensure safety, reliability, and desired performance of the physical processes being monitored and controlled. Again, I return to the word safety is a main, main consideration in industrial cybersecurity. The goal is to protect the control system process, the physical process, and the people and the, uh, who work there the, the surrounding environment and the equipment, the property there, so you you know you, you don't have something where you need to call the fire department and the rescue department. Uh, you want to avoid that kind of situation if you have a, a physical process that something goes wrong. A key takeaway of this MLM: the information technology environment that we are familiar with on our desks in our offices. It's not the same as an industrial environment governed by the laws of physics and chemistry. You know, care must be taken when applying a cybersecurity policy to an industrial environment. The next MLM in this series on the CISOs, uh, the three-part series, is uh, 050B and 050C, and also a 001-B MLM is also useful. There are some also uh, references to look up that you can find on your own using a web browser.